Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I hope you're keeping well. Uh, and uh, again, a reminder that midweek is on tomorrow night, half past seven. Uh, link is in the newsletter. If you uh, don't have that, if you need the link, please get in touch with me. Uh, and we're continuing looking at Matthew 7. Uh, just a, a shorter passage this morning, just following on from uh, yesterday's reading. So Matthew 7, uh, and looking at verse 24. From there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. He said to her, For this statement you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. She went home, found the child lying in bed, and the demon gone. This follows on from yesterday's reading, uh, when Jesus has that discussion with the, the scribes and the Pharisees about what is clean and what is unclean. And immediately following that uh, conversation, he goes to uh, a Gentile region, an unclean region, Tyre and Sidon. He enters presumably a Gentile and unclean house, speaks to a Gentile woman, um, and on, on two grounds, things that, that no good Jewish religious leader should be doing, speaking to a Gentile and speaking to a woman, and then casts out an unclean spirit from a Gentile girl. Jesus in the previous passage had declared uh, all foods clean, you remember, saying that nothing that, you can, that comes from outside can come into the body and defile it. But it's not just foods that he's declaring clean. It's all people groups, all ethnicities, all nationalities, and his immediate journey from a Jewish region to a Gentile region confirms that idea that the the whole idea of, of Jewish cleanliness uh, ritual is is something that Jesus is declaring now is no longer important but it's one thing to be declared clean it's another thing to deal with the shame and the guilt that often makes us feel unclean Jesus knows that this woman who's come to him feels unworthy and unclean before him. He knows this. He recognises this in her. Verse 27, which sounds very harsh uh, at first, uh, is designed to bring that feeling out of her. When he says to her, let the children be fed first, for it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Describing Gentiles as dogs, something that, that, that happened on a regular basis. And it sounds unusually cruel, if you like. But it's an intentional, um, it's an intentional idea to <clears throat> try and bring out from this woman how she's really feeling. He knows that her sense of shame uh, is almost overwhelming her. Uh, and so he wants to bring that out of her in order that he can help her. She admits before him that she feels this great sense of unworthiness. She doesn't dispute his description of her. She accepts it. She admits her unworthiness. But she's also determined that that is not going to get in the way of her presenting her needs to Jesus. It's not going to get in the way of her coming to Jesus for help in her desperate situation with her daughter. And that's the crucial thing. This woman's felt 
guilt. This woman's felt shame. This woman's felt unworthiness. It does not get in the way of her coming to Jesus. It does not prevent her from putting her trust in Jesus to heal her daughter. And in having that sense of unworthiness and guilt and shame overcome, she gets more than just the healing of her daughter, more than just the casting out of the demon from her daughter. She gets that sense of Jesus having made her worthy, having removed her guilt and shame. And this is where this woman is exactly the same as us. We are full of guilt and shame. We are full of unworthiness. And when we recognise the holiness of God, when we recognise the sinlessness of Christ, and we reflect back on our own hearts, we realise the truth of what Jesus says, that those hearts are places out of which come all of the sins that he mentioned in yesterday's reading. And so we recognise ourselves as full of shame and full of guilt and full of unworthiness. But that sense of shame and guilt should not be keeping us from Jesus. In fact, it should be the opposite. It should be what drives us to Jesus. Because in going to him, in allowing him to take that sense of shame and guilt, he can set us free. He bears all the shame and guilt at the cross. He bears our sin. He takes the shame. He is cursed for us so that we might be free of sin and unworthiness and guilt and shame so that we might be called children of God, loved by the Father and accepted. What a tremendous thing that is. So however you're feeling this morning, however you're feeling about yourself, however you're feeling inside, know that you can come to Jesus. He has borne your guilt and shame. He has redeemed you. He has set you free. You are a child of God with your faith in him. God bless.